Scientists at Florida Atlantic University using a lab to visualize what happens when we cough. Charging. The engineering professors use a dummy to simulate the cough droplets we all create. Three, two, one. The FAU team uses a laser to follow how far those droplets travel. What you're looking at is a mixture of water and glycerin that creates smoke 10 to 20 microns in size. The same size and weight of the smaller droplets of fluid we expel when we cough. <coughs> The simulation shows the projection. Three feet traveled in less than two seconds. Within 12 seconds. That's at six feet. And in 41 seconds. There we go, nine feet. And that was a, a cough, would you say? That was a heavy, heavy cough. In some tests, we saw the cough travel up to 12 feet. Okay, this is a slight cough. The scientists say naturally, a lighter cough doesn't travel as far. In every simulation, we observed what the naked eye cannot see. I'm standing at the six foot mark. We have a heavy cough, smoke comes, lights out, and there you can see it coming towards me, and boom, within seconds, it's already reached me, and now it's going past me. So what we are basically um, simulating here is the, the fate of the small particles, the small uh, uh, droplets. And the fate that we saw was some drops with gravity, yeah. some is suspended, suspended in and the, the biggest surprise is the ones that rise. Right. But we shouldn't be surprised because what's causing it to rise? What's causing it to rise is the thermal uh, currents. Those microthermal currents are all around us as you stand in your house, sit in your car, or shop in a grocery store. If I'm in a grocery store, and somebody coughs, do I turn around and run the other direction? Don't run the other direction, but I would, my suggestion is avoid that area for a few minutes. Because it's lingering in the air. It could be lingering in the air. Increasingly, masks are commonplace. Remember, the use of a mask is to protect other people, not you. It doesn't stop at 100%, but you can see how it dissipates a cough. Dr. Donald Milton at the University of Maryland. I'm not sure I understood the distance that a simple light cough could travel. Well, this is one of the reasons why there was a recommendation for surgical masks, because the surgical masks are going to slow down that jet and prevent it from traveling as far. If I see somebody not wearing a mask, what should I conclude? They're irresponsible. The reason we should all care about this is when we cough and those little droplets are expelled, a tiny coronavirus can attach itself to that droplet. Then if you walk and inhale that, or it even just reaches you, then you become exposed to the coronavirus. And if you're wondering, our lab test was inside a place that would be very similar, say, to an empty grocery store. Outdoors, even with a gentle breeze, it's a very different situation, guys. Mm -hmm. So, well, that was sufficiently yeah. scary. <laughs> uh, Carrie, is, is there anything that, that can be done to better protect us from these, these micro droplets? Well, we heard Dr. Milton from the University of Maryland who has studied influenza, not coronavirus, but influenza. And in his study, he looked at things that grocery stores and malls could do including high up in the ceiling, putting germicidal lights, as well as ceiling fans. And ceiling fans suck up the air. And so remember, we saw that sort of suspended in the air. The ceiling fan would pull it up and away. Kerry, I would, this is also, I guess, another reminder that when you do cough, like in, into the arm, right? I mean, that's... Yeah, but you know what? Even then, when we saw with the mask, yeah. you know, even when you put the mask on, and I think it's important to note, when you're wearing the mask, you're not wearing the mask to protect yourself, say, from the person over there. You're wearing the mask so that when you cough, you're not exposing them. But as we saw in the test, it even sort of rises up and that suspension becomes an issue.